I'm Jason from the Dental Equipment Repair Channel. Today I'd like to share with you a way to fix your own Gendex 770 X-ray. We see a lot of Gendex 770 X-rays fail for a very common and simple issue, and that is power switch failure. That power switch gets touched every single time you turn your unit on and off. And one of the things that we've learned in our industry and in our role as dental equipment repair technicians is that things tend to break where people touch them. The Gendex 770 is no different. Now this x-ray is a terrific x-ray, and if you have them hanging in your office, you're fortunate. These are workhorses, they're reliable, and they look great, and they work great. So if this happens to you, typically what you'll end up with is a scenario where the x-ray power switch seems to crack in half. You will see a light bulb exposed, and you'll see pieces of it fall out onto the ground. When this happens, um, you will be unable to activate the power switch and it will either be stuck in one position or the other. If this happens to you, don't be concerned. You can easily obtain the switch on the internet. This is a GSX-016 and you can find this on any eBay, Amazon, or anywhere you buy your dental equipment or pair parts. This switch has four connections on it. It's what we call a single pole double throw switch, meaning that when you flip the switch, it connects basically your line and your neutral on the primary side to the line and neutral on the secondary or machine side. Now, this switch is configured in a certain way and you've got two pole, two of the prongs are bent at 45 degree angles and two are straight. We're going to do two things when we do this job. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're safe. And the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we don't mix up any of these wires. Now, to be safe, what we're gonna to need to do is make sure that we don't have power applied to the unit. With this being the primary power switch for the X-ray, it always has power to one side of it. So if you go and start messing around with this switch without actually taking the power and turning it off, you're in for a little bit of a nasty surprise. So we're gonna help that not happen for you. Now, the way you're going to make sure that you're not going to shock yourself, you're going to disconnect the power cord from the wall, and then you're going to verify that that power cord is not connected and that that is actually hooked up here to the two poles marked 115 volts and zero. If you're holding this in your hand and it is not plugged into the wall, you know that there's not power applied. Now, this might seem like really simple advice, but this is just in case some of you aren't experienced working with electricity as much as others. The second way to deenergize your unit, if there's not a plug coming out the bottom, is you have to go to your circuit breaker panel and you've got to find the circuit breaker that's marked for the x-ray in that room. Now, when you flip the breaker off successfully, you're going to kill power to the unit and that's going to mean you're going to be able to safely work on it. So you can see what the electricity is doing inside the unit we use something called a digital multimeter. And in order to use the multimeter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch it to the V with a wavy line. This is volts AC. Now, carefully, only touching one probe at a time, one point at a time, we're gonna ground, we're gonna to touch the black light lead to the ground, and then we're going to go ahead and right here where we have the 115 volts coming in, we're gonna to touch the red. And that's going to jump, that number is going to jump up. And right now I'm seeing 122.6 volts. Now this power is being applied through the system to the switch. Now what you would expect to see if the power if the system was de-energized and you did successfully turn off your breaker is you're going to touch to the ground of the, of the unit, which is the ground lug, and then you're going to touch the black and it's going to say less than zero. Right now it says 0.218, which means it's not energized. Okay, so now that we have a safe unit that is not energized, I can show you how to go about changing the switch. 
The first thing we're going to do is for ease of demonstration and also just for ease of doing it, you may choose to do this as well, is there are two screws, one on the top and one on the bottom of this bracket. I'm going to go ahead and take those screws off and set those screws aside. There's just two of them. And once we take those screws off, what we're going to have is we're going to be able to bend this down and you're going to see the terminals. Now on one side of the terminals where there's a bent lug and a straight lug, one of the white wires and one of the black wires on one side of the switch are going to go to the terminal strip. The other black and white wire are going to go in a different direction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we keep the whites on the same side and the blacks on the other side and we're going to make sure that we don't crisscross them. The way we're going to do this is we're going to um, first release the, uh, release the switch by pushing in these tabs. When we push in the tabs, we're going to create a little bit of a way for the, the switch itself to make it through the hole. So I'm going to just push those four like little legs of a spider. I'm going to push them all together and then I'm going to advance the switch through the housing. Now, even though I've done this quite a few times, you can see that this is not going to necessarily come out the easiest way. So save yourself a little bit of time and don't plan on doing this job in a big hurry. All right. So now the things we're going to pay attention to is on the bracket we're going to look at the orientation of the switch with regard to the bracket. We're going to make sure that the new switch goes in in the same orientation that the old one came out. So we're going to take and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by working around in a circle. And I'm going to start just by choice with the black wire on the straight lug. So I'm just going to take and pull, pull that off. I'm going to pull that off and what's happening is it's really digging into my fingers. So something you can do is you can take your screwdriver and you can use that screwdriver on that de-energized circuit and you can just twist it a little. Now when you twist it, that screwdriver blade is going to wedge that contact up and out of the way and that's going to save your finger a little bit. So I'm going to take that first wire off and I'm going to insert that wire here onto the exact identical lug. And I'm going to push it on until it engages. And now I'm going to do the same thing with all the rest. All right, now there, two accidentally came off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the black in line with the black like it was. And I'm going to put the white where it was and then also pay attention to where the remaining white is and that should be the fourth position. All right, so now what we have is we've got the old switch out. And we've got the new switch through the hole. Now, I think I better remember. I'm pretty sure it was that way. All right. Let's 
pretty awesome. Now in this scenario, I think I would have benefited from goes, taking a picture. It goes the other way. All right. All right. So, as you can see, it's easy to get mixed around. Taking a photo ahead of time would probably be a good idea for anything that you take apart electronically. All right, so we're gonna shove that in there and we'll take our screws, put our screws right back in where they were. Test the switch, make sure it feels good. Now we'll go ahead and plug everything back in or flip your breaker back on and we'll turn it back on. All right, so there you have it. This is how you would go about changing your power switch in your Gendex 770 X-Ray. The uh, main things that to make sure, again, the two main points are making sure that you're safe with electricity, that the system's de-energized when you're working on it, because if it's not, it will it can hurt you. The second thing is making sure that all your wires get back to where they came off. And I guess like 2A would be making sure you don't put your bracket on upside down, because that is possible. Now that we have everything back together and working, the last thing we have to do is put the cover back on. Now I didn't really talk about taking the cover off in the first place, but it's a really simple installation. All you're going to do is align the cover up the way that it came off, and then you're going to have to move the x-ray arm out a little bit. By moving it out, you're going to free up against the hardware that's hanging down, and this cover should slide on. Right? And once, once you accomplish that, all you need to do is put back on the screws. There's two in the top and two in the bottom. So this is uh, the process for replacing the Gendex 770 power switch and how to make sure that you're, you're safe while you're doing it. Thank you.